There was a strong interest in landscape in Australian poetry after World War II. That's to say the period in the late 40s right through to the 50s. The key figures were Judith Wright, uh, David Campbell, John Blight, Roland Robinson and Douglas Stewart who was literary editor of the Bulletin and who published many of their poems there. The landscapes are alive with beauty or filled with meaning. There's a strong sense of the landscape being owned, being invested with meaning. But at the same time, they open out into long perspectives of time or distance, a sense of eternity uh, which uh, is devo devoid of uh, human presence or even indifferent to it. Uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt that these sombre perspectives are a response to uh, the destruction of the war itself and to the conflict between uh, ideologies, between capitalism and communism, uh, which immediately followed it in the Cold War. It was, after all, a period in which uh, the social landscape was dominated by the uh, destructive spectre of the bomb uh, and the devastation that it promised, not just for now, but uh, uh, for all mankind and for all time. Uh, I think you can see this combination in Judith Wright's poem, South of My Days, where a landscape which is replete with family history and stories of heroism and adventure um, and suffering um, because Wright's ancestors were among the first white people to settle in the New England area. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this landscape is encased in the darkness and cold of winter, like honey in a hive, to use the metaphor employed in the poem itself, harvested from the past, uh, available possibly uh, for the future, uh, but under threat uh, in the present. It's even more pronounced in her poem, The Surfer, for the first part of this poem offers a wonderful uh, expression of energy and vitality and joy uh, in its portrait of the surfer and his, quote, brown strength uh, driving through the hollow and coil of green through weirs of water. Uh, the poem sounds very much like a Jared Manley Hopkins poem with its sprung rhythms, uh, which uh, are used, you know, to convey that sense of uh, unbounded energy, really. Nevertheless, the tone alters halfway uh, through and becomes dark and sombre. Turn home, the sun goes down, swimmer turn home, last leaf of gold vanishes from the sea curve. And the poem turns into what we readily understand to be an elegy, I think, not for this young man alone, but for youth itself. And it's here that you really feel uh, the experience uh, of the toll of death uh, in World War II. Uh, the poem was written in 1946. Um, and, and what you feel is not just the vulnerability of this young man, but you know, that sense of uh, youth uh, uh, condemned uh, before the consuming power of time and history. It's at this point in the final stanza that the landscape of the poem becomes allegorical and the sea in the cold twilight wind is seen as a grey wolf smiling, the beast of death, obviously. Uh, the sea in uh, Kenneth Slessor's Beach Burial uh, also has this allegorical aspect, uh, the way it holds the body of the bodies of the dead soldiers in suspension. At night they sway and wander in the waters far under. Uh, Slessor's um, great-grandfather was Kapellmeister to the court of the Hesses in Darmstadt and a good friend of Beethoven's. And you get a sense of uh, uh, Slessor's music. He, he put a lot of store by music. You get a sense of his wonderful musicality in that line. Um, uh, at night they sway and wander in the waters far under. But it is allegorical because the sea contains these soldiers uh, like insects in amber, in fact. There are similarly long and uh, um, uh, sombre perspectives in Douglas Stewart's uh, Birdsville poems. Uh, the flashes of life and colour set against the desert wastes of red, sun-blasted sand and stone. And I quote, Where life, if it hopes to breathe, must crawl in the shade of a stone, like snake and scorpion, all tastes like dust in the mouth, all strikes like iron in the mind. The allegorical impulse in portraying the Australian landscape is very important, I think. It means that the poets are determined to view the landscape in universal terms, even while recognising its local particularities. This is especially true of A.D. Hope's Australia, where the country is represented as an old woman. Uh, the trees are soldiers, the cities are sores, the rivers run with stupidity, the deserts are full of prophets. 
This allegorical habit suggests a climate of fear and danger. It's as if the poets felt the need to speak out in universal symbols that would be readily understood even when all forms of communal understanding had been expunged from the earth.